Recording is on. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, it's really great to see you if you just started watching this video on YouTube. It's really great to see everyone. Um, so um, I'm Greg. I'm the community lead from Plastic Free Chesterfield. Um, and it's really great to see you um, here. It's really great. We've got, we've got some good people here. We've got, um, yeah, really great to see everyone on this call. So thank you so much for joining. And um, looking really looking forward to this presentation today from Hubbub. Um, so we've got Alice and Natasha here, um, who's going to be giving us a talk about what they've been doing in terms of looking at our on the waste, um, on the go waste problem. Um, so it's going to be really fascinating, fascinating presentation, and we're looking forward to it. And uh, I've even um, been speaking to people from Chesterfield Borough Council who unfortunately couldn't make it to this meeting, um, but they are they are interested in this subject and. Um, and they will I'll be sharing the video with them um, and I recommend everyone share it with their own council's waste and recycling team as well because this is a really important issue and it's something that um, you know is going to be of huge interest to all of our council's waste teams so um, yeah do do pass it on once uh, once you've got the link so I'll pass over to Alice and Natasha now so thank you thank you so much for joining that's great Thank you so much, Greg, and thanks for the nice intro. Um, we're really delighted to be here today, and um, we hope this presentation will be useful and interesting for you, um, talking about bins in a in a fun and different way, hopefully. And it's been really good to hear the, the discussion just now about all the amazing zero waste initiatives and uh, plastic free pledges that you're doing. Um, so yeah, really, really good to, to see that. Um, so I'm Alice and um, I'm here today with my colleague Natasha and we both project lead at Hubbub Enterprise, which is the enterprise, uh, uh, so, sorry, social enterprise branch of Hubbub, the environmental charity. Um, so what we're gonna, going to present you today is one of the key issues that we've been working on, which is recycling on the go. Uh, so I'll present the bit that I've been working on, which is recycling plastic bottles and cans. Um, and uh, Tash will um, talk to you more specifically about coffee cups, because you'll see there are two different issues. Um, but how about we talk about it about under one single umbrella, which is in the loop. So obviously to describe the journey of the materials when they are back in the system. Um, so quickly about um, Hubbub. Just checking, can you see me while, can you see me while I'm sharing my screen? Yes, we can, okay. yeah. Because I, I'm seeing something completely different to everybody else, but that's okay. Um, if you could just move to the next one, just so quickly, um, Hubbub. So we are an environmental charity, as I just said, but we really are a traditional one. We are trying to bring environmental messages to, main, to a mainstream audience and especially uh, people who wouldn't otherwise engage with environmental messages. So I guess not, not, not people like you guys. And we try to do it in a way that isn't preachy or negative, but hopefully fun and different. Uh, in a way that is accessible and interesting and relevant to what people care about. So we focus on two, uh, sorry, four main areas, as you can see on the screen. So it's about the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the homes we live in, and our neighborhoods. Um, and we do that by collaborating with the big and the small, from small community groups on the ground to large corporates, uh, local authorities, especially on campaigns like Recycling on the Go. Um, and we always try to have positive communications, good design and stuff like this. So I really recommend you, you go on our website and register to our newsletter. Um, so you, you will have a lot of good tips on sustainable living in, in there. Um, yeah. Handing over to, to Tash to tell, us, uh, to tell you why recycling is still important, but hopefully you, you're all aware. Tash, you're on mute, I think. Tash, we can't, we can't hear you. Sorry, sorry, so just... <laughs> No worries. Can you hear me? Uh, Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Alice, I actually, um, I can't get my notes up for this slide. So if you wouldn't mind uh, going forward to that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 
It's it's the next one actually. There is nothing on that. It's just the next one. Yes, exactly. Um, sorry. Do you want me to take this one? Cash. <laughs> So I'm having an issue moving between mute and not mute while I'm sharing my screen. So, um, yeah, Alice, if you could just take this one forward while, while yeah, I that out. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing you need to know with recycling is that it actually makes a difference. A lot of people think that, you know, uh, you put something in a bin and you don't really know where it ends up. It actually um, saves carbon emissions from two key processes. The first one is that it actually avoids the extraction and production from uh, more virgin resources, uh, which is kind of obvious, you know, like you use more stuff, so uh, you don't need to take more stuff from, from, the, from the earth. Uh, and the second thing is that you avoid the emission from disposing the materials in landfill, uh, because they go back in the loop, obviously you save, you save from that as well. Um, you will see from the impact we've made through our project that it is still important to raise awareness about recycling. A lot of people still get it entirely wrong. Um, so, um, so yes, it's important to continue having this conversation, even though I agree when you talk about more like zero waste lifestyle and going higher in the waste hierarchy that we need to do more than recycling, but still uh, for mainstream audience, it's still an important issue and we, we need to tackle it as well. Uh, it goes alongside all the other things. Um, and then just under that, I think there was a little graph that showed the waste hierarchy, but again, like coming from a plastic free group, I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, um, just showing you that the worst you can do basically is um, dispose of your materials in landfill um, or actually um, in the natural environment as we've seen this this summer with COVID where people actually were dropping things outside. Then it can be landfill and then uh, things can be burned uh, and then energy can get can be um, gotten out of uh, the materials and then recycling it up there. But then there are also really like better thing that you can do uh, including reusing things and obviously reducing your consumption of raw um then the next slide yeah so the issue uh, i'm i'm not sure if you can see the whole thing here but basically trying to give you a bit of context into the issue with recycling on the go specifically um we go through billions and billions of plastic bottles cans and coffee cups every single year in the uk and the frustration is that a lot of like they all get recycled they can be recycled but they aren't and this for two main reasons the first one is that even when there are recycling facilities so basically like recycling bins uh, in a city center in a in a local authority um, in a street um, um, it's because it get contaminated because people put the wrong thing in the in the bins. Actually, people uh, the local authorities can't do much um, with what is inside. Um, and then the the second issue with it is that actually people are confused. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I'm explaining it really well. Basically, uh, one thing is only ha half of local authorities have recycling bins, which is an issue. And then the second thing is that people are confused about recycling so they put the wrong items in the bins so that it, um, at the end of the day the bins get contaminated and then you can't do anything with the the materials that you have recycled uh, sorry that you have collected um, so yeah so that creates obviously some issues um, and then specifically on coffee cups cash your expertise <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I'm on mute or not. I'm just going to... No, we can hear you now. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, I'll take over from here. Um, so, coffee cups. Um, Hubbub has gotten really into um, the issue of coffee cups. We're coffee cup obsessed, one, one might say, and we can't believe how much time we spend talking about coffee cups. Um, why? Well, there's a very good reason. Um, there's quite a lot of coffee cups being disposed of every day. I just... Wondering if you could all maybe think for a second of um, how many coffee cups you think we use in the UK each year. Maybe you could put some numbers in the chat. Is that can you guys access the chat right now? I can't see. Yes, somebody's saying five billion. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Any other cool numbers being thrown around? Two point nine. Okay. 
So we actually use almost 3 billion cups per year in the UK. Very good trade seed, yeah. <laughs> that uh, that's 8 million per day and 5,555 per minute. So breaking it down, uh, I don't know, for me, the 5,555 per minute is like the most intense number. It's just like, so many coffee cups. And uh, I suppose people aren't thinking that. Um, you know, they're just using, I'm just gonna get a, coffee, a, a takeaway coffee cup today, you know, no big deal. But people aren't thinking about how much they all add up. Um, and we've become so aware of how they add up, how much they add up, that this is why we're, we are really trying to tackle the issue. Um, now, the thing is coffee cups can't be recycled with uh, other paper goods because they're lined with plastic film to stop hot drinks from leaking. That means they need to be recycled separately. Um, the issue is people don't seem to know that and there doesn't seem to be enough infrastructure around for people to be able to recycle their coffee cups. So do you guys have any idea how many, what percentage of coffee cups actually get recycled? You can leave some numbers in the chat. Uh, somebody's saying 1%, 2%. Yeah, these are very low. Sadly, they're really close, yeah. So less than 4% of uh, coffee cups are recycled in the UK. Um, so just to give you an idea though, that 3 billion number, um, we figured out that that's enough to stretch around the world 5.5 times. So <laughs> that's a lot of coffee cups. Um, and yep, <laughs> let's see what we can do to, to solve the issue. Um, yeah. And so I'll hand over to Alice to talk about in the loop and, and how we got on our journey. Thank you. Yeah, that's the moment where we, everybody gets a bit stressed about, oh my God, the immensity of the issue, but hopefully here we're offering solutions. Um, so thanks, Dash. So the journey was in the loop. Um, basically, uh, was in the loop. We started really small. We started actually with a coffee cup trial um, in London. I think, Tash, you can go to the following slide, to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we started with, um, a coffee cup trial in London and then it worked really well we collected a lot of coffee cups and then we realized that actually people not only consume coffee cups on the go but also you know plastic bottles and cans and glass bottles so we tried to do a, a trial at a city level um, and this is where we did in Leeds with the Leeds by example campaign that we launched in 2018 um, and it was a massive success. So we installed um, a lot of new recycling points, collected over, yeah, I think it's 1.5 million items for recycling. And then I think what we can be the most proud of is that we really created a, a, a strong brand and a lasting legacy in Leeds. So now I think the city council is in Leeds is using the Leeds by example brand to talk about anything related to sustainability. So it's really, it has, um paved um paved the way for for more action around not only recycling but but more than that and then um after the leads trial we realized that maybe we were into something here and there was a lot to do around on on the go recycling so we we thought why don't we test it in other contexts and other locations to really try to build a model then that maybe you know can be replicated in other places so then we launched phase two which um, um which was in swansea and edinburgh to again try in a in a welsh context and in a, a scottish context and we obviously leads by example didn't work as a, as a name so we we created the, the the name in the loop um and this is where we are at right now but if you go to the next slide um the good thing is that we're not we haven't finished yet the the good thing is we have now a proven track record of the fact that it works what we're doing uh local authorities are happy with the result there's a legacy of the campaign in each of the cities where we have done it uh, but there are still some gaps um, in the model that we're trying to build so now we're thinking about a phase three to really try to understand how we can test it in um a town environment because we've on, always done it in a in a city environment and we think that testing in the london borough is going to be quite a different challenge as well and then it's been really interesting to see how uh, separate organizations have come to us so major companies um, like danone for example coming to us and say oh we want to found a, part a particular campaign in one specific area 
Uh, so we're doing that on the side as well. Um, so that's that's the the journey within the loop. Um, and then, so by now you must wonder. So what do you do? Like how how do you make people change their behaviors? And how do you um, how do you actually make people recycle on the go? So Tash, if you go to the next slide, please. Yeah, oh, sorry. sorry. Yes, I missed that. Um, you, um, you go. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so yeah, um, I told you that we've we've gone mad about coffee cup recycling at Hubbub, um, and I just thought I'd take you through the journey of uh, you know how we got to where we are now. And um, so I'm just figuring out my notes. Um, and yes, so we've always been mad about coffee, um, but it's gone to went to a whole new level. I mean, we all love coffee. It's the, the fuel of the nation. Uh, but it went to a whole new level when um, we started recycling them at Hubbub. Um, and that was back in 2016 um, with One More Shot, which was a campaign we started in Manchester uh, with the aim to recycle 30,000 cups from one street, um, which were then transformed into a range of recycled products that were donated back to Manchester to help green the city. Mm -hmm. um, we then, in 2017, moved on to the Square Mile Challenge, which happened, which happened in the city of London, the Square Mile there, um, to see over a year how many, it was, it was a challenge to, to really get people motivated to, to recycle their cups, and it was absolutely amazing. And, and when that ca campaign was over, people sort of said, well, what do we do now? How do we keep recycling cups? So it really like gained momentum and virality. Um, then we moved on to Leeds by Example, which, uh, Alice has really taken you through, um, which of course involved into In The Loop. And then as part of In The Loop, um, we decided to, um, to launch the Cup Fund. And this is where things really took off with cup recycling. And, and I actually, I run the Cup Fund at Hubbub. Um, and it's the UK's biggest ever grant fund to boost coffee cup recycling. Um, now it's actually um, thanks to um, Starbucks's voluntary voluntary 5p cup charge so it's the lot it's called the latte levy and they charge 5p for every disposable cup um bought in store um in fact people who bring reusables save money at starbucks so every single one of those 5p donations um goes to hubbub um and with that money we've um, been running all sorts of campaigns around um plastic waste and and awareness and, and reusables and of course coffee cups. Um, so yeah, the, co the cup fund's currently running um, and I'll, I'll talk about it a bit more later, but the aim is to recycle 35 million cups in the first year of the cup fund. So that's uh, pretty major. Uh, and then most recently uh, launched uh, earlier this month was uh, coffee cup recycling um, across network rails, mainline stations. Um, so that's another like major boost um, for coffee cup recycling and, and, and awareness. You know, I think by traveling by train is, you know, commuting is when, when one's probably most likely to have a disposable cup in their hand. So there's really no excuse now. Um, so yeah, that's the journey of our coffee cup recycling. Excellent. Thank you, Tash. Um, yeah, so back to the question I was asking earlier, like how do you actually do make people recycle on the go in a city centre. Um, so to answer that question, that question, we've created and tested um, what we call our behaviour change model. So if you go to the next slide, please. Um, so I don't know if you can see much of the detail here, but basically what you need to understand is that there are two strands of work that need to go hand in hand. If you have one without the other, it doesn't really work. So on one side, you need to really make people able to recycle. So you need to have the right infrastructure, the systems of provisions, the rules, really everything that will make people um, actually like physically able to recycle. So it's a lot of bins, but it's also like a partnership between um, people within the city center to actually decide on you know consistent branding, consistent messaging and all of this. Um, and then on the other side, you need to help like find creative ways to make people interested in recycle and, and therefore willing to recycle. And we've discussed before contamination, but if you have 
bins out there, but people don't know how to use them or they don't really care about it, then you will have contaminated uh, waste and then it will be impossible to recycle it. So really they, they go hand in hand. So one of the creative things that we've been doing to try to get people willing to recycle was a high profile um, media campaign. So really try to you know get the BBC and the Guardians, but also all the local um, media in a particular city uh, engaged and you know talking about what we're doing in the city and that has proven to be really um, successful we had a lot of coverage especially for the first one leagues by example uh, we had both like really good national coverage and, and local coverage and then what we did um, alongside that was um, a targeted social media campaign so really trying to uh, to to see how we could influence people while they were about to make the behavior. So for example, we could, um, thanks to Facebook now, we can, you know, if somebody's going or passing by a Starbucks or like uh, leaving a Starbucks and we know this is spend money there, um, we can, you know, push some message in their Facebook that says, uh, don't forget to, recy to recycle your, your coffee cup. So that's really powerful because it's really like a, a prompted, you know, um, nudge that that proves to be really effective as well. Um, we did a lot of events, a lot of, you know, like conferences and stuff on the ground as well, thanks to our local partners. And then one key thing that we did that worked really well, I was a bit skeptical about it initially, but actually it, it proven to be so powerful, is to have an art installation. So really trying to help people visualize the issue and, um, offer some local statistics to help people engage with recycling. So for example, in Swansea, I think later in the presentation, you will, you'll be able to see um, the Swansea wave, which basically represents the amount of plastic bottles and waves uh, and cans, sorry, uh, that the UK consumes every three seconds. And it's really, really scary. It's huge. And then I can tell you, I spent two days um, in the rain in Swansea, just um, engaging people, um, you know, pa uh, who were passing by the wave. And it was a massive conversation starter. You know, like I didn't have to talk to people. People were reading the sign about the three, three, three seconds and they were like directly engaging with me, telling me, oh my God, this is, this is crazy. I need to tell my wife and I need to, you know, recycle more. So it's, it, it works really well. Um, and that again is part of the making people willing to recycle. It's a way to like really point people in the direction of the bins, the bright, colorful bins that we have been um, um, introducing in in, a, in the city centre. So that's in essence what, what we're trying to do with within the loop. Um, yeah, and then Tash, you can talk a bit more about the the behaviour change techniques that we're using. <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Sorry, I. I don't know why it does that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm having. Um, I'm having trouble with the tech here, Alice. If you could go ahead with this one as well again, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I mean, I've I've briefly talked about this actually already. Um, but we for the simplify. Uh, behavior change techniques, we've realized that people spend an average of two seconds at a bin. So if you have two seconds of somebody's attention, you have to be really, really clear and impactful and maybe, you know, like fun and try to, to basically to try to get people's attention. Um, so what we try to do is really create a strong and recognizable brand that is really bold and clear and playful. Um, so that people recognize it from afar and then they, it's, it's really easy for them to understand what they have to do. And that again is really powerful. Um, the prompt, the prompt uh, behavior change technique is um, the fact, the, basically the idea of using the right message at the right time. And this is what I was telling you earlier about having a targeted social media campaign uh, it is relevant to me now, therefore I'm going to actually do what you tell, you're telling me to do. And then the, f the fun theory. So let me introduce you to um, Gordon Bennett. So this is, this is Gordon, this is our bubble bin, and it basically blow bubbles and burps whenever you give it a plastic bottle or a can. 
And this was amazing. Like, this is the reason why we had the BBC covering our Edinburgh in the little campaign. Like, they were like, oh, you're doing the bubble bin again. Like, we loved it in Leeds. And basically, they, they went to cover our, our launch day just for that. So it's really a way to engage not only the media, but also the public around it. It just helped people pay attention to what you want them to pay attention to. So um, in terms of design, really like character driven, playful, colorful stuff. And again, it doesn't attract kids only. It's also, it's also for um, all the kids. So that proved to be um, really positive as well. Um, and then the next. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> um, hello, so back to coffee cups. Uh, <laughs> I thought you might have missed it. Um, I'll tell you a bit about the, about the Cup Fund, um, which is, is our biggest, as I said, the UK's largest grant fund uh, to boost coffee cup recycling. Why we've done it and what it means for the state of coffee cup recycling um, waste and, and why it's, you know, what we're doing in terms of behavior change. Um, so we set up the fund in April 2019 um, by publicizing an open call for projects around the UK to apply for grants that would help them develop long-term coffee cup recycling infrastructure. You know, at this point, we thought we, we, we can do these, these, these little campaigns, like what I mentioned one more shot in Manchester and the square mile challenge in the city of London. But to really make an impact, can we really sort of keep doing this on our own? So let's, let's raise the money and let's, find some people, um, some projects to, to, to deliver it for, you know, with us, um, with our support. Um, so we received 30 applications outlining ambitious plan plans for the introduction of new recycling schemes. Um, 12 of these applications were selected. Um, that was following a three month application and selection process by an independent panel consisting of experts in recycling infrastructure, behavior change and communications. Um, and each of those winners received between 50 to 100,000 pounds in grants. Um, now, this meant that they could set up infrastructure um, in their locations. So just to let you know, um, the winners include, um, th there's a few in London, in Brixton, in the South Bank, um, three London univer univer universities, um, London School of Economics, uh, University of West Westminster, um, University of Queen Mary, although after COVID they're having some issues, so we're going to have to relocate some of those bins. Um, we have coffee cup recycling now in Bristol, um, in Nottingham, at this uh, a retail park there, um, University of Northampton, and uh, you know, that's just to name a few. And you know, uh, of course, the, the plan or the, the the aim is to to let that spread like wildfire, just absolutely every, everywhere. And uh, all these different uh, schemes were able to set up coffee cup recycling in their area. Um, so that meant they could use the money to A, buy the bins, have the bins designed specially, um, B, uh, communicate the situation, the, you know, market the bins and communicate the, the, the new infrastructure and, and the issue, of course, raise awareness around it um, effectively. Um, and, you know, there's been a bunch of PR around and awareness and we've been actually amazed by how much the public have picked up on coffee cup recycling stories. They absolutely love it. And I think it's got something to do with the fact that everybody drinks, most people drink coffee and most people have the experience of drinking out of a, a disposable coffee cup. So it's something really tangible and I think it's something that the public can really sort of grasp and get their head around when it comes to, you know, there's so many environmental issues which are almost too big to, to digest and handle. But this is one thing that they can do. They can recycle their coffee cup with these special bins and seems, yeah, it really, it's been received so well. Um, so the outcome of this is that coffee cups can be collected separately and turned into paper products. And in fact, the paper products that come from coffee cups are ex of extremely high quality. And there's um, three paper mills around the UK that can, um, can, can, can actually like carry out the process, which means separating the paper from the plastic lining. And uh, if you've ever been to Selfridges in London, uh, well, those bags are made out of coffee cups from one of the paper mills that, um, one of those three paper mills, which is called James Cropper. Um, it's amazing actually, if you look on their website, James Cropper, they've got a, a fantastic videos of um, the entire process. 
and all the beautiful paper goods that um, we are left with at the end. So it's a no brainer really. <laughs> That's it for, for me for now. I'll be back with more coffee shop news. <laughs> Um, excellent. Thanks, Tash. Um, in terms of the impact we've made, we've uh, obviously tried to to measure and track the, the impact we've tried to do with um, the in the loop campaigns. And uh, I think there are three main areas where we had an impact. So if you go to the next one, please. Um, the first thing is obviously we're promoting a more circular economy. That's the obvious one. So we've calculated that between Leeds, Swansea and Edinburgh with those six months campaigns, we've um, diverted 44.5 tons of materials from landfill. And obviously, as I was telling you before, this means that there is also greenhouse gas um, saved from, you know, expanding the life of those materials, which is which, which is really positive and also means that we are generating less need for virgin resources, which is which is really key. The second aspect is that we are having, um, sorry, Tash, can you just move um, the next one, please? Thank you. Um, we're having a lasting legacy for the area. So what we try to do always is not only to do a campaign for six months, but really build a legacy for the city so that it was an, a viable system that was running in the long term. And that proved to be really effective because now all of the three cities where we run the trial are now continuing recycling on the go and it's successful always viable um and obviously you know all the bins and all the infrastructure are now uh, belong to the council and they collecting all the waste and doing all the like the system is really in place and then we've created communication materials that you know um can reach even uh, larger audiences in the long term and then finally, in terms of impact, um, there is a qualitative impact, which is really difficult to um, quantify, obviously, and it's a bit less tangible. But we're really hoping that we have, you know, planted a seed in those people that we've tried to educate around the problem of recycling and, and waste. So hopefully, um, there will there will be a new newly established recycling culture uh, that will. Um, how people yeah have more pro environmental behaviors uh, in general and then it feels like you know if if a, if a city center is cleaner and more circular then uh, hopefully you can also gain in attractiveness and become you know uh, more environmental uh, environmentally friendly like um, attract more businesses attract more tourists etc so there was a an impact around this as well um, and then just to bring it a bit to, to life a little bit, the next slide is around what we did in Swansea. Again, I'm not sure if you can really see that, uh, but the, the first thing you can see on this slide is, bless you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't put myself on mute because I can't leave the screen. <laughs> Um, so the first bin you can see here um, is an old bin. So actually Swansea was an interesting example because they had a recycling on the go system. So they had those bins, but it didn't work. It was terrible. It was completely contaminated. And then they couldn't do anything with the waste. So what we tried to do is really, you know, make it work. And that was a success because um, if you can, if you look on the right side, the little diagrams, uh, you can see that at the beginning you had only 25% of target materials in the bins, which means that only one out of four of the um, uh, materials in the bins were the right one. And then at the end of the campaign, it doesn't seem like so much, but it's actually huge. It was half, uh, a bit more than half, um, that was um, target materials, which means that we converted one out of four people to change their behaviors and actually recycle. But it also shows that there is still a long way to go before everybody actually recycle properly. And that just shows, and this was in six months. So that's why the long-term legacy of what we're doing is really important because if you know people keep hearing the same messaging over and over again, then they're more likely to hopefully change their behaviors in the long term. Um, and then other impacts, yes, yeah, so we've um, collected six tons of materials. We know that because we were running uh, monthly waste audits, uh, which was really useful because we could really track 
uh, how the bins were performing months after months and you know it was really helping us inform our strategy in terms of i don't know like this one is really contaminated maybe we need another one next to it or maybe we need to do more communication because it's, it's in the busiest train, train station and people maybe uh go really quickly by it and you know so it was really informing us those ways audits and then um really good um comes as well with a lot of uh, social media impression a lot of businesses on board um, so there were really like consistent messaging across the, the city center. Um, so that's the Swan C result. Okay, so um, back to coffee cups and the impact of our coffee cup work. But I realized on my last slide, there was an image there, which I didn't explain. So I might have left you all thinking, what on earth is that image? So I'm actually gonna cheat and go back a few slides and just tell you why we had that image. This one on the right, can you see it? Um, yeah. That's our coffee cup cube. And um, that was one of the behavior, or one of the stunts we did for the, um, for the cup fund, the coffee cup, cup, coffee cup recycling project, um, in order to raise awareness of the magnitude of the issue. Now this was an art installation outside the Tate Modern in London, and you can see it's facing St. Paul's Cathedral, um, created by an incredible um, independent art duo um, based out of London. And it was up there for almost three weeks in the end. Um, and it was a cube you could walk through. It was four by four by three meters. And it was made out of 5,555 coffee cups. And that is the number, as I already said, that goes to waste every minute in the UK. So this was a very high profile art installation. This one, we, we love doing art installations to, to carry our message across and to, um, you know, cr spread awareness in order to affect our impact, which is, of course, the topic that we are currently on. Um, and yeah, um, I just thought it was worth going back to the slide just to, just to show you that and uh, how one how how we work to sort of visualize issues. So back to the slide. Um, so with, through all these different coffee cup campaigns that we've been running. Um, of course, we, we want to focus on the, the impact we're having and, and what we're actually doing to, to, to create change. So first of all, we're communicating um, single-use coffee cup waste, these extraordinary numbers. Um, we're always encouraging the use of reusables. That's the number one goal, um, bring a reusable cup. It's, it's, it's really hard at the moment with COVID because lots of um, cafes are not accepting reusables. But that's the bottom line is um, the less waste, the better, of course. And uh, you're a, a, a group that would know that better than anybody else. Um, we're nudging the public on how to recycle their coffee cups. So through all these cool bins that we have designed and uh, um, all the different cup fund schemes, those 12 projects that, that received grant funds have all spent loads of time designing bins and thinking of the best, the best way to go about it. Um, what sort of receptacle should there be? You know, how, how, how high should the bin be? Should there be a, a place to uh, separate lids and liquids on the cups? but I'm gonna go into that um, at the end of this presentation. Um, so I've already told you that the, the aim is to recycle 35 million coffee cups in the first phase of the cup fund. Um, and then bottom line is to create a long-term legacy where each project is equipped with the right infrastructure and know-how to continue delivering lasting coffee cup recycling schemes. So um, hubbub, you know, where you can, we can be there to support and, and hold the hand, but at the end of the day, um, each individual scheme or, or location in the UK needs to be able to, to, to carry that through. Um, great, and then in terms of the, the lesson that we've learned, there are many, I mean, from the day-to-day the -day, uh, management of those, of those campaigns, but here are just a few. So I think the first one, which is I think really key for everything we're doing is collaboration is key. So we've done um, collaboration um, on the In The Loop campaign through two major, um, how do I say, um, for, for two major things. The first one is for the funding model. So it's actually, um, it's actually a consortium of funders. So it's a really good example of companies collaborating to get the messages uh, out to the consumer and retailers. So it's really like the major retailers in the high street who are funding us and they're each giving us a pocket of money. And it's 
it's like they're taking a bit of responsibility into the taking care of the waste that they produce and really coming together and 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 trying to constructively tackle the issue which i think is, is a really good example um and it has been done obviously at any like none of that is branded so they're not doing that for marketing purposes um of course they can put it in their nice you know impact report but this is all about you know uh, trying to take responsibility for what they do so that's a really good example and then in terms of delivery um delivering the campaigns on the ground we are usually reliant on local partners because obviously, you know, they know the city much better than we do. Uh, they know if a plastic bottle with a Scottish kilt uh, or some puns in the local dialect is going to work or is going to be a total flop. Um, so informing us on communication, you know, and they obviously have a huge network on the ground uh, dealing with the issues and all of that. So collaboration is key. And this is something that we really uh, um, make the most of. Um, make, um, make recycling simple, visual and fun. We've gone through that a few, a few times. Hopefully you are, you've understood that now. Um, make sure that everything is consistent. Uh, part of the problem, again, is that people are confused about recycling. So making sure that, you know, it's the same branding, it's the same colors everywhere. Otherwise, um, again, you're going to lose people and they're just going to drop their item in the closest bin. Um, Quality of recycling is influenced by bin positioning, weather and season is another lesson. So obviously, uh, whether you're in the busy city centre during the festival season in, in, in Edinburgh is going to be different from, you know, the outskirts of Swansea. Uh, so you need to uh, account for that. Um, cap collections are important, obviously, if Tasha hasn't convinced you of that yet. Um, thorough, regular, consistent monitoring um, is important because, again, it allows you to really understand um, if what you're doing is effective and really inform what you what you're doing next. So we're really doing a test and learn approach. We're not, you know, spending all the money uh, at once. We're really trying to to be agile and then being, build a legacy again. Hopefully, by the end of this talk, you will have understood. But we're really trying to. Um, to test things in the long term and have a system in place and then you know let local partners just run the show um yeah so our main conclusions for coffee cups um as you can see in this picture here that's um one of the coffee cups that was next to that art installation you can see the st paul's cathedral in the background um and these are the coffee cups that have been placed on street um around the south bank of london um, strategically. Um, it's just one of the types of coffee cup bins um, designs, but this is one that we do highly recommend. Um, the place to insert your coffee cups at eye level and there's just very, very clear um, messaging saying coffee cups only, please um, recycle your cup here. Um, now, color of the bin is actually extremely important. We've, uh, we've really tried to make orange the, the color for coffee cup recycling. And we encourage anyone that's um, starting that up to, to go for orange so that we can see some consistency across the UK. And of course, consistency is key. Um, so um, in some cases, um, due to like the, the branding of, of, of some councils, um, they've had to deviate from, from the orange, but um, yeah, orange is the new color. Um, as I said, clear messaging. Um, people have no time at all to dispose of their coffee cups, especially if they're in places like ra railways, ra ra um, train stations, where they're just rushing. Um, so it needs to be super clear and straightforward. Um, as I said already, consistency. Um, there's a big difference between having um, coffee cup recycling on street versus managed spaces. Um, on street is, as you can probably imagine, much harder to... to control um, what's going on and out, managed spaces, um, people do have a little bit more awareness and time. So we're talking office buildings, um, retail parks, that sort of place where they, they can really, the, the, it can really be monitored what's going on. Um, the problem with on street is we find a lot of contamination. Contamination is when people are just throwing whatever the heck they want into the coffee cup bins. Um, so, a way to avoid that is coffee cup bins, coffee cup recycling bins, sorry, uh, always need to be um, positioned next to a general waste bin and a mixed recycling bin. They need to come in threes. 
so that there's no confusion whatsoever. Um, and these are just get treated as, as regular bins. So as, um, as we go with the cut fund and all these 12 new projects, we're learning lots and lots and lots of new things as we go. Um, there's always more to learn ar around people's habits um, with waste. So um, stay tuned. <laughs> And then finally, to conclude that that talk, uh, just a little bit on the wider ambition for all of our recycling on the go work. Um, what we want to do is really transform the approach at um, UK scale. So as I was telling you before, we really are trying to build a model that is it's not going to be perfect, but and it's going to be adaptable. But hopefully that can be replicated across any local authority, uh, town or city uh, in the UK. And what we're doing right now is combining the learning from, you know, the three phases of In The Loop and all the cup fund and all the uh, coffee cup work to create a, a really comprehensive how to guide for end local to say like, this is how you should do it. Then we promise you it's going to work. Um, what we've been starting doing as well at Hubbub is link what we're doing with the policy agenda and really trying to see how we can influence government's policies uh, around waste and um, and resources. Um, so we are, yeah, well, we uh, have actually developed what we call the green print for better Britain. And I invite you to have a look at it uh, on our website, basically outlining recommendation for the central government to change the way we eat, we shop, we use space and we work in a post COVID world. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully that will have a, a much greater um, impact as well. And then again, like this is the group where uh, we, we pu are pushing it to the converted, but just reminding everybody that recycling is a part of the uh, jigsaw in fixing the waste problem and that we are um, encouraging people to move to our, toward a more circular economy, uh, you know, encouraging both recycling and reuse um, and reduce even better. Um, and I think that's it for us. I'm conscious it's. Um, three minutes to eight so i'm really sorry that i would talk to took so long this is the problem when you put two passionate people in front of a topic <laughs> but do you no, have amazing. for us at all no thank you so much it was really 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 interesting and lots of yeah total, lots of passion there lots of um, really really incredible work it's a lot of work has gone into it it's obviously taken um a good number of years to try and have a kind of look at this and it's yeah obviously it's still there's still got to be a lot of learning and I think like one of my concerns is like, yeah, you know, I still I still feel like, yeah, it's that kind of issue of this. People are still don't know about recycling. People are still con contaminating um, on the street, recycle, you know, on the street bins. And that that's, you know, there's still there's still we still have a huge issue in terms of that. But, you know, at least this is it's at least something it's to progress. try. And, yeah, yeah definitely. Definite progress. Which It's really good to see the. Um, the the slide where um you showed about the, the amount of um progress that's been made out, out of it you know there's still some contamination but the contamination is definitely less than what it was so that's you know it's yeah. it is, you are you are making a difference and i hope that i hope the government and can can kind of um you know can realize that as well that, that this is something that's really important so um I know that um, if anyone wants to um, ask a question, then you can type the um, word hat into the chat box. Um, but I know um, there's um, Dave uh, mentioned about this. What I mean, I don't, would be interested to know what your thoughts are. Dave, um, unless Dave, you want to kind of come in and on the, on your point about Starbucks. Um, yeah, can can you hear me, Greg? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very conscious of being sound, sound like an old Mizog on this one, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a retired teacher, and, and my first uh, lesson that I gave uh, on reduce, reuse, recycle was back in 1991. And in those days, I was telling kids that uh, there are some countries, you know, in continental Europe that uh, that make where the governments make the producer of the waste responsible. Um, for the waste they produce, yeah, and uh, I'm assuming that that those countries still do that. And 30 years down the line, how government still isn't doing that. And and you know the the work you guys have done is great, but it really isn't the responsibility of. It should be the responsibility of the producer of that of, of that waste, as far as I'm concerned. 
Yes, and this is this has a terminology. It's called the extended producer responsibility, um, and this is something that is currently in discussion in the UK and in many other countries. I agree with you. It's a it's a very very slow process. I didn't know that it was already in the table thirty years ago. Um, I think I think this is an example of the industry taking some responsibility in the in you know funding a part of the solution and then testing things uh, as actually you were discussing uh, before we started this call uh, greg but you know we need the pressure from um from people uh from things that work on the ground like this at a small level to be able to be able to convince an industry or a government that this is the right way forward so i'm hoping that if we bring you know our learnings and recommendation to a government saying look this is what we, we can do at a small level um, um the industry is ready pay to pay for it i mean we're having conversation with various uh, large corporates and they understand that this is this is you know this is pending this is going to happen in the next few years so i feel like we are going in the right direction but i agree with you that it's really really slow um but yeah hopefully we, we're getting there I think the extender um, extender responsibility was is a part of the environment bill. I think I'm pretty sure that was kind of going to be a one part of the environment bill that we were going to try and push, you know, try and push for. Um, but so that's going to be a good opportunity to to, to kind of push for that. Um, so Tracy, did you did you have a, a question about lids, or about about separating out lids? Did you want to unmute yourself? Oh, I can't unmute you, so you have to click on the um, mute button. There you go. I think you should be able to hear me now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you recycle the cups, don't you? But you don't recycle the lids, so they, they just get thrown away, do they? Uh, yeah, that is definitely uh, an issue with the lids. Um, they can't. Yeah, they can't apparently be recycled and they certainly can't go in with the coffee cups. So that is an issue when it comes to, again, like separating all the, the components of the material that you're disposing of. Um, you know, we've already got the, the, the paper that's lined with the plastic that needs to go into its own bin, but then you've got the, the, the lid. So how do you communicate that? And because people spend such little time at a bin um, and you, we're trying to simplify the messaging as much as possible, um, it's an issue still to be tackled. Um, next time you're at a network rail station, you'll see that they have these special bins that have three sections. One's for the lids, one's for the cups, and one's for the liquids. So that's a very sort of intuitive um, bin experience, I would say. Um, and it's going to be really interesting to see how well that works and what contamination levels look like. Um, but in the orange bin that I, I presented to you, you can see that there was no place for the lids. So that's an issue and a, 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 it's a sorting issue when it gets to the plant, basically. Yeah, but basically it get pre-sorted by, but it has to be done manually, which is obviously extra effort at the plant. So that's why the more people are aware that the lids aren't recyclable currently. The, the, the lid is arguably the, the worst part of the cup as well, not, not so much the paper bit. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah definitely it, it sounds like it's a real difficult situation like i just yeah you just kind of think like, is there a way of like us lobbying like to is there you know is are we just uh, is there no you know we want to try and move to a circular economy you know can we not look at you know how how can we you know this if this if the lids is is the is a big issue of coffee cups or whatever you know we've got we've got to kind of we can't just keep cooking out tons and tons of plastic on on coffee cup lids you know you just you just think it's going to be insane and the amount of plastic that's being generated for, for coffee cup lids they've got we've got to kind of think about how do we move to a circular economy for for, for that mm. could redesign the cup to have a paper lid maybe <laughs> yeah, yeah. The effort to do that why don't we yeah push it to promote reusable instead <laughs> yeah i mean this is my first option this is why we're promoting reusables as our sort of bottom line aim. But we have to do coffee cup recycling in the meantime because mm. can't get everyone to convert so quickly. So we're doing our absolute best to 
educate people through these coffee cup recycling initiatives, through these bins, through art installations. Um, and then it, back to the point about it being the responsibility of the, the people who are producing the cups in the first place. Um, yes, that's true. But, um, you know, if people want a coffee and they haven't got their reusable cup with them, then that company still wants to sell their coffee. So we're, we are still, we have a, a, a while to go until it really gets ingrained into the psyche of the consumer um, to bring a reusable cup. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and we're just we're just going to keep pushing. Um, you know, obviously, and during like you know during the pandemic and stuff, it's really difficult. But like for example, at Plastic Free Festival, we had a we ran a campaign called Summer of Refills, and it was all about kind of highlighting all the local businesses that were offering refills. Um, you know, where you could take your reusable cup, and we had a Google Map, and we had a, a page on our website where you could kind of take your reusable cup and stuff like that. And we had little videos from all the business local businesses. They were accepting reusables and things, you know, really trying to kind of get reusables on back on the menu and stuff, working with city to see. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we just you know, I think I think that's gonna have to be something we just keep pushing really and um just cont cont continuously getting that message out about reusables is, is so so important. So yeah. Um and Nesta, um did you you, you had a question did you, did you about schools? I don't know if uh, I don't know if she's still here or not. Um, but she said, "Do you have a link to all? Have you a link to all local schools? Have you have you done any work with schools?" Yes, actually, because they are part of the um, of the key players in the city centre. So we have engaged with schools, and we've done a lot of um, you know like little events where our local delivery partner was going there and talking about the issue of waste and recycling and educated them. And then we had in Swansea, so the Oh yeah, I didn't really show it when it was on the on the slides, but you saw the big gigantic wave, right? And this this wave was moved around the city center, and it went to schools, and again to like the show to children what what that was about. We did a lot of work with universities as well because we know that actually the the age group 16 to 25 is uh, most I think likely to consume on the go. So there is a lot to do around around uh, educating this audience as well. So yes, we're working with young people, kids, because my, obviously the generation, next generation. So yeah. My my question was really based on the fact that I I, I actually run a community interest company, but um, we ran out of water. We we were cut off from in, from from the the um, Seven Trent had re really major problems about two years ago, and they. Um, gave out thousands of bottles of water and I was looking at getting in schools and doing something with something like that the, the actual plastic um, and recycling projects do you do anything like that in terms of using the the plastic bottles in new creative ways um... yeah, well creative ways and also that then gives them a a kind of project to look at the problems of the recycling and what to do with it because thousands of people had eight to twelve bottles of water each mm. and they just went into recycling um but many of them just put them in the bins because they didn't fit in the <laughs> recycling so um is there something that you can do on a smaller local like for instance in chesterfield Um, did you hear all that? Yes, yes, <laughs> I did. Yeah, I have to think about an answer now. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess the again the engagement we did with school was much more. You know, let let's talk about this issue and you know find like you know provide a space to to discuss it and let the kids um, express their concerns for the future and stuff like this. But we didn't really. Do anything like that i would have to think about it <laughs> um well, just an offer to greg i'm quite happy to sit that down and talk about a project with him yeah no that yeah no it's all good you know we've um you know we've got we've got volunteers who go into schools to teaching um you know talking about the issues around plastics um and you know so if, if there's a if there's a way we can kind of look at kind of you know again it's really difficult with all the covid stuff because you know we can't go in and run assemblies and workshops and mm. stuff with the kids and stuff at the minute um but hopefully you know next year we might be able to have more of a chance to, be able to do something like that but anything where we could kind of yeah 
look at going into some schools and running some workshops of getting the kids looking at how they can you know um, upcycle or reuse up, um, you know learn about recycling and reusing yeah. water bottles and stuff like that so it's all going to make a difference so you know it's 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 yeah but hopefully in in each of our areas we can kind of look at doing some stuff in schools and, and going and running some workshops and coming up with some ideas so there was you know it's all it's all up to us really <laughs> in the end just to approach our local schools and see if we can try and get them involved in doing something some kind of creative project so and the kids get really on board like you know surface against sewage have a uh, a, a plastic free schools initiative and there's there's hundreds of schools all over the country signed up to the plastic free schools program mm. um so you know the kids get um very very uh yeah very enthusiastic about kind of wanting to take action on plastic so you know anything you, you can kind of do something creative um one of the things we were going to do in chesterfield was we were going to have a food and we were um it was going to be a food and drink festival this year and we were going to get all the schools to come up with a competition for designing a sculpture to go into the center of the food and drink festival using sort of plastic bottles and you know similar to what you guys were doing in terms of sort of like you know to raise awareness about just how many how many plastic bottles have been thrown away or you know that kind of thing so um you know that's just an idea that you can kind of do you know you can work with your schools run it run a local competition and they can come up with the kids can come up with a design about you know create their own recycled sculpture